Hey everyone, Mike from Video Maker here, back with another Q&A session. Uh, before I start, I want to thank everyone for their feedback on the microphone. Um, really, your responses were kind of mixed, so I decided just to go with uh, whatever I feel like, which right now is the mic on the stand. Uh, just easier than um, connecting a lav mic to a recorder and all that, because that stuff floats around in our studio and this is always here. So, although one person did say that it looked like a Franken mic setup, so I uh, took that to heart and uh, added a bunch of gaffer tape here, straightened up the wires, got rid of the clamp, so hopefully it looks a little bit better. And hopefully it sounds okay too. I'll maybe tone back the compression a little bit. So this week's question comes from Christopher from the YouTube comments section. Christopher asks, what are good camera settings for my 7D for shooting green screen? Um, well, that's a great question. I'm going to leave this response open to sort of DSLRs in general. So hopefully this will be helpful to um, most everyone instead of just people who have 7Ds. But really it boils down to five factors. ISO, aperture, picture style, resolution, and compression. Okay, so let's cover the easy ones first. Uh, resolution and compression. Resolution, you just want to go as big as you can. So most DSLRs now are shooting 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, just as many pixels as you can fit into your screen at once, pretty much. If your camera shoots 4K, shoot 4K. Compression boils down to which format gives you the biggest file size. Of course, depending on what your frame rate is. So you want to compare um, apples to apples. If you're shooting 24 frames, don't compare that to the 60 frame setting. Just compare it to the other 24 frame setting. And whichever one gives you the biggest file size that has the least amount of compression. And just choose that. Now let's tackle picture styles. So in your camera, it likely is already set to standard, which is basically what the camera comes pre-configured with. But basically, uh, you don't want to use that because it adds a little bit too much contrast um, and just uh, overall is a little bit too much uh, post-processing. You want to take care of your post-processing in post-production on your computer and don't let your camera do it for you. So there's two options for you um, and neither of them come pre-installed on your camera. Both of these are really widely revered in the industry so they should be pretty safe bets. The first is what's called Pro Lost Flat and it's developed by a guy named Stu Mashowitz. You can check out his website, um, ProLost, and I'll put a link in the description for you. But basically what you wanna do is start with the neutral picture style, turn your sharpness all the way to the left, then set your contrast all the way to the left, then set your saturation all the way to the left. Color tone you can pretty much leave as it is. From there, you basically just wanna turn your saturation up to the right about two notches. Now this picture style is used uh, by people like Vincent LaFaure and Philip Bloom, so you can pretty much trust that uh, it's pretty good. Now I will say that when you're working with green screen, sometimes it's good to give it a little notch uh, of sharpness, just because on the edge of your subject where on the picture your subject meets the green screen, you wanna really have a hard definition there. So for green screen specifically, I like to add a little bit of sharpness back in. If you need any more than that, you can apply it in post-production. The next one is called CineStyle, and it was developed by Technicolor. Um, and I'll put a link to the CineStyle preset that you can download. Again, this is gonna give you a really flat, really neutral look. In fact, it's gonna look amazingly desaturated when you're actually shooting and looking at your files. But that's okay, you can fix that in post-production. Again, just like with Pro Lost Flat, I would add a notch or two of sharpness uh, just to help you with that green screen definition. So from there, you can go on to adjust your ISO. Now, Technicolor says to go with ISOs in multiples of 160. And the reason is because every ISO value between 100 and 200, basically the even numbers, um, are simulated. So on the lower end, like a 120 or 140, those are the ISO 100 plus noise added to simulate a slightly higher ISO. However, 160 is actually 200 ISO with noise removed. Now, some people on the internet, including the people who manage the um, Magic Lantern wiki, say that that's incorrect. Um, however, Technicolor uses um, scientists and engineers to figure out this kind of stuff, so I trust them more than the random internet user at this point. So keep your ISO as low as possible and at multiples of 160. If you can keep it at 160, um, that's the best. The reason is uh, a low ISO is going to give you very little noise and make it much easier for your computer to differentiate between the different shades of green. The last thing you'll need to consider is your aperture. Now your aperture, as you know, uh, affects how much light hits the sensor, but it also affects your depth of field. And the reason why that's important is because you want your green screen to be just a little bit out of focus uh, compared to your subject. Uh, and the reason is uh, that out of focus will help sort of soften the wrinkles in your green screen if you don't have a perfectly flat green screen. The other reason is most lenses are at their sharpest at f5.6 anyways. So 
combining that little bit of shallow depth of field uh, plus the sharpness of 5.6 is really going to give you the best results. Finally, the last thing I'll mention is if you can record in a format other than what your camera natively records at, um, you're usually better off. So there's two ways you can do this. One is you can output your camera signal to an external recorder like an Atomos Ninja and record um, 422 video, which gives you a little extra color space to work with, which makes chroma keying much easier. Unfortunately, not all cameras can handle that, and actually the 7D is one that can't. You want to check your manual to see if yours can do that, or just do some research online. Uh, a lot of the newer Nikons do it, and the higher-end Canons do it. The other thing you might want to try if you have a Canon camera is to install Magic Lantern, and then just record to Magic Lantern RAW. As long as you process that properly in post-production and save to a format like ProRes 422HQ, um, you should have a really, really clean green screen that keys right out. So that's it, Christopher. Hopefully that answered your question. I'm curious what the rest of you uh, have experienced shooting green screen with DSLRs. Anyway, let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comments, and if I missed anything, hopefully uh, you guys can fill in the gaps. Anyways, as always, if you like this kind of content, I encourage you to sign up for our email newsletter. We'll send you tips and tutorials and articles um, straight to your inbox, so you can sign up for that at the link. And of course, if you have any questions you want us to answer in a future video, you can put them in the comments below. You can tweet us at VideoMaker. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash VideoMakerOnline, or you can shoot us an email. We're editor at VideoMaker.com. Again, I'm Mike for VideoMaker. Thanks for watching.